Thank you. We will begin this meeting uh, with a special message from Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India's G20, G20 presidency's preparations and approach are driven very much by his vision. I request your attention to the video message on the screen. Foreign ministers, head of international organizations, Excellencies, I welcome you to India for the G20 Foreign Ministers Meeting. India has selected the theme of One Earth, One Family, One Future for its G20 Presidency. It signals the need for unity of purpose and unity of action. I hope that your meeting today will reflect the spirit of coming together for achieving common and concrete objectives. Excellency, we must all acknowledge that multilateralism is in crisis today. The architecture of global governance created after the Second World War was to serve two functions. First, to prevent future wars by balancing competing interests. Second, to foster international cooperation on issues of common interests. The experience of the last few years, financial crisis, climate change, pandemic, terrorism, and wars clearly shows that global governance has failed in both its mandates. We must also admit that the tragic consequences of this failure are being faced most of all by the developing countries. After years of progress, we are at risk today of moving back on the sustainable development goals. Many developing countries are struggling with unsustainable debt while trying to ensure food and energy security for their people. They are also the ones most affected by global warming caused by richer countries. This is why India's G20 presidency has tried to give a voice to the global south. No group can claim global leadership without listening to those most affected by its decisions. Excellencies, you are meeting at a time of deep global divisions. As foreign minister, it is but natural that your discussions are affected by the geopolitical tensions of the day. We all have our positions and our perspectives on how this tension should be resolved. However, at the leading economies of the world, we also have a responsibility toward those 
who are not in this room the world looks upon the g20 to ease the challenges of growth development economic resilience disaster resilience financial stability transnational crime corruption terrorism and food and energy security in all these areas the g20 has capacity to build consensus and deliver concrete results we should not allow issues that we cannot resolve together to come in the way of those we can as you meet in the land of gandhi and the buddha i pray that you will draw inspiration from india's civilizational ethos to focus not on what divides us but on what unites us excellencies in recent times we have seen the most disastrous pandemic of a century we have witnessed thousands of lives lost in natural disasters we have seen global supply chains break down during times of stress we have seen stable economies suddenly overwhelmed by debt and financial crisis these experiences clearly show the need for resilience in our societies in our economies in our healthcare systems and in our infrastructure the g20 has a critical role to play in finding the right balance between growth and efficiency on one hand and resilience on the other we can reach this balance more easily by working together that is why your meeting is important i have full trust in your collective wisdom and ability i am sure that today's meeting will be ambitious inclusive action oriented and will rise above differences i thank you and wish you all the best for a productive meeting i thank the prime minister for his valuable guidance i now begin the first session of the g20 foreign ministers meeting as i do so excellencies let us remind ourselves that this grouping bears an exceptional responsibility we first came together in the midst of a global crisis and are today once again actually confronting multiple ones these include the impact of the covid pandemic concerns of fragile supply chains the knock on effects of ongoing conflicts anxiety of debt crisis and the disruption of climate events in considering these issues we may not all always be of one mind in fact there are some matters of sharp differences of opinions and views yet we must find common ground and provide direction because that is what the world expects of us colleagues as we look ahead there are both pressing and more systemic challenges that we all confront the future of multilateralism depends very much on our ability to strengthen it in a changing world food and energy security are immediate anxieties magnified by recent events but they do have long term repercussions and solutions and development cooperation is part of that larger solution 
that we are deliberating upon today. Colleagues, the current global architecture is in its eighth decade. The number of members of the United Nations has quadrupled in this period. It neither reflects today's politics, economics, demographics, or aspirations. Since 2005, we have heard sentiments for reform being expressed at the highest level. But as we all know, these have not materialized. The reasons are no secret either. The longer we put it off, the more the credibility of multilateralism stands eroded. Global decision-making must be democratized if it has to have a future. Our agenda for today's discussions include the challenges of food, fertilizer, and fuel security. These are truly make or break issues for developing countries. We heard their concerns directly in January this year through the Voice of Global South Summit. Such issues should not be relegated to the periphery of the international discourse. They are, in fact, crucial to the global economy and must be treated as such. Indeed, we urge that they be central to any decision making. Along with that, the world must also strive for more reliable and resilient supply chains. Recent experience has underlined the risks of being dependent on limited geographies. Excellencies, all of us, individually and collectively, have an obligation to contribute to international growth and prosperity. They are implemented through sustainable partnerships and goodwill initiatives. On its part, India has undertaken development projects in 78 countries and has actively encouraged exchanges and capability building. During the COVID pandemic, we made a conscious effort at contributing to global solutions even while looking after our own. Today's situation demands that we continue to live up to our international responsibilities. The G20 must be sensitive to the priorities and economic concerns of all our partners, especially those more vulnerable. We must ensure demand-driven and sustainable development cooperation based on country ownership and transparency. Respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity are essential guiding principles for such cooperation. Excellencies, as G20 foreign ministers, we can send a collective message affirming our determination to address the complex challenges that we face at this juncture. 